All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, germs and worms and all dead things concerned. Welcome to another today's decay. That's right. I know we're I know we're a little late, but we're still we've still made the day. And here I here I have yeah. my here I have my uh, my guest star, Howie Pyro, who is uh, thankfully called in today. Hi. Hi, Howie. How you doing? Very handsome. Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> a very handy man indeed. I have a green thumb, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't see it. <laughs> so it is June twenty eighth here, and around the world, and way out into space, maybe. And that's an important one. We're celebrating births and beginnings of everything important since the dawn of time. And on this day, me. Yeah. Well, all right. Where? Yeah. It was. It's Howie Pyro's birthday today. Happy birthday, Howie. Thank you. What's more important? <laughs> I don't know. I, we, we don't go by level of importance. We go by chron chronology. Yeah. Carmology? Yeah. I have a new car. Moi. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you have a lot of drive? A new head. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? I'll tell you what's up. On this day in 1882, uh, Valeska Surratt was born. I want to know all about that one. Well, I know she's really interesting. She's um, I think you could compare her to like, almost like, like a, a Pyra. Well, to like a Jane Mansfield to Marilyn Monroe, or like you know, like maybe Van Doren to Marilyn Monroe, in that like, Theta Barra was really like without, the, you know, like yeah, without the blonde. Well, no, no. The thought is like. Theta Barra was like the um, trailblazer. Like, you know, she was like the... Yeah, you know, well, like she started it. And then you had a series of other people that were like, oh, well, if you're going to do that, I'm going to do that because this is this is my aesthetic too. And the difference here is that uh, Valeska, this was like her choice where like Theta Barra was really like a, a creation of the Hollywood studio, William Fox Studios. She was like a creation of, of uh, a series of marketing people. Uh, Valeska Surratt, I, I, you know, was equally like draped herself in in cobwebs and spiders and stinky cheese and like made a point of being like you know a a vampire all herself and did it because stinky she wanted cheese. to. Huh? Is stinky cheese a vampire thing? I don't know, but she definitely did it. There's like pictures of her with like you know stinky cheese. Yeah, she's tried to make herself seem like off putting. You can smell the cheese in the photo. It maybe it's the maybe it's like vinegar syndrome. Mm, no, perhaps. Yeah, but she didn't put vinegar syndrome on herself. I don't know. It's lost the time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so right, so she was she was born on this very day in eighteen eighty two. Uh, also on this day, Stuart Farrar was born in nineteen sixteen. Um, I guess not one of the very far are away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't. He wasn't one of the the first echelon of uh, Wiccan um, priests and priestesses, but I guess he was like the second tier or so. Uh, again, I think I, we keep talking. I keep wind up with like Wiccan stuff to talk about here, but I don't have. This is not my thing. But I appreciate anybody that transcends their own environment and comes up with their own way of saying the world as shaped by me. And, you know, the Wiccans did that, I'd say, in their own way, right? We can all appreciate that. Hi, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, well, so, so many tears, I might start crying. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. What else? Not tears, w Wiccans. Wiccans. Anyway, uh, Betty Hill was born on this day. Um, Betty Hill? No, Betty Hill, as in like Betty and Barney Hill. Sorry, don't 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 cue the music. Whatever you do, don't cue the music. <laughs> uh, no, Betty and Barney Hill. Betty was born on this day in 1919. Uh, the two of them, they are the the first reported um, alien abduction case, and. Uh, one of the things that may be striking about this, this is 1961. Alien adoption? Abduction. 
and and all the more timely because yeah abduction yeah because the two of them were um, production she was uh caucasian and he was african-american at a time where like this was not deemed uh like it is now i i don't i don't know i'd like to say that we're moving forward in life maybe not but the important thing no. here is it is not surprising that they said hey we got abducted and wanted to leave the earth because this is what they were dealing with as an interracial you know couple yeah, yeah, I think, you know, they were probably targeted for more trouble than it was worth. Yep. Yep. Probably by Nazi police officers. <laughs> oh, they were together for years, and they were both outspoken about their UFO experiences, and I feel like they they presented as, you know, spokespeople of uh, uh, enlightened people, whether they were you know, completely off the deep end or not. Um, anyway, also on this day in 1926, Mel Brooks was born. Yes. I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan. And, huge. Big it every day. And that brings us to the wild, wild world of 1960, where Howie Pyro was born. Woo! Ha happy birthday, Howie. So what, what, what do you... Sorry, I had a call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what are you doing today? Um, this. Today I'm, uh, I had a good uh, sort of celebration with the world last night. That was a first. Um, Cretan Hop, my friend Roger Lawrence and Rick uh, do it every Saturday night now that they can't have their club. So they, um, broadcast the weekly on Saturday night and so I had a, a birthday thing that and I DJ'd and the band played remotely from a different place uh, premonitions who I really like and uh, you know there was six or eight people there and we barbecued outside <laughs> kept our distance and, oh you mean like uh, in person like you actually did that yeah, and as each person DJed, they went up alone into the living room where the equipment was and the video equipment and the, the all the mm -hmm. computers and everything and the turntables and they did a set and DJ. The, for the this is the longest I haven't DJed probably in my adult life, about four months. Mm -hmm. So that was fun and um, lots and lots and lots of people. Uh, tuned in evidently and um i'm gonna do it again awesome i think awesome and that's a really good thing that you could tune into uh on weekends there's always something good on that station there and you could go on on uh instagram or facebook and look up cretan hop sounds is the great. name of the club sounds great uh yes sir also, on this day, 1963, Tim Polcat was born from the Polcats. TP! Yeah. Can't get enough TP. <laughs> I love Tim Polcat. Um, I, 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 uh, I have a really good Tim Polcat story, actually. Uh, so, oh, yeah. we booked... Did you chase him up a pole? No, but there, there are pipes included, yeah. Um, Uh-oh. So, pipes? in, like... In, in, in the year 2000, me and some friends booked this, like, three-day-long... In the year 2000! It does sound futuristic, even talking about it now, right? Uh, so in the year 2000, we ran this uh, three-day-long Psychobilly Festival with bands coming in from all over the world, and knowing that audiences... Where? The Birch Hill in New Jersey. It was, like, supposed to be Demented or Go... Batmobile, Necrom Necromantics, Caravans, Kings of Nothing. I'm missing it. There was like 30 bands, 30 bands over three days, knowing that the audience was coming in from all over the world. So we could do overflow shows on either side. So we did the Thursday night at CB's and the Monday night at CB's. The Monday night uh -huh. was, so like, you know, not as many people, but enough. And the Monday night was in the basement of CB's. And so that was the very last show, and I was 20 at the time, and I was the, wow. sta I was the stage I manager. I just had to search my mind for a second to remember that there was a basement of CBGB. <laughs> at, at that point, yeah, yeah. Well, there was the gallery, and then was it the lounge? I forget yeah, what they yeah, were yeah. called. 
Yeah. Anyway, so Tim Polcat, which at this point it was Tim Polcat and Jeff Black Machine, were the like headliners of the Monday night show. And it was in that basement area. And they got maybe two or three songs into their set. And then he jumped up on a pipe that was like right above the stage and swung on it. Oh, God. And it broke. Oh. And it wound up being like a main water valve of like the block that like they couldn't just turn off on their own. They needed like the fire department to come. It was like gushing water, like within moments or not true, within minutes. It was like past your ankles. Like the entire place was like covered in water within minutes. How we all didn't get electrocuted, um, I don't know. were thrilled with you. <laughs> Nobody got paid. We all just like ran for the hills. I, I, like, I don't know how everybody like didn't get electrocuted from it. And and that was the end of this five imagine day. Imagine that it was. Imagine it if it was the um, sewage pipe. <laughs> I know. CBGBs and that block at that time. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we all just like ran for the hills. Nobody got paid. Nobody even asked for money. We just like, like forget it. We're done. And that was the end of like our. That was the end of our like five day international psychobilly festival in New York. And I just, I, I was living in Philly at the time and I took the uh, uh, bus back home later that night and just thought like, good God, like what happened here? <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> and they, they never talked to us about it again. a tidal wave of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd say we probably wet people's appetite for the music genre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This idiot keeps calling me, not realizing that I'm hanging up on him over and over again. Nice. <laughs> Well, so Mike, I don't know what I don't know what what time frame we've hit at this point, but I was hoping to keep it under fifteen minutes, so it winds up as just one clip. I don't know. Okay. Maybe, maybe we're still there, but uh, I just I wanted to say, you know, on this very day, celebrate Howie Pyro, the blessed freaks, Harana, uh, degeneration, dancing. What am I missing? All sorts, intoxicated radio, and maybe have some fish. Uh, yeah. And maybe have some fish for yeah. dinner. Yeah. And lots of stuff coming in the future with something where video and all different kinds of projects and stuff that's going to be really great. Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, um, I have been, uh, and I write for Dangerous Minds when they come back on. Uh huh. The biggest blog in the world, pop culture blog in the world. And, um, and uh, by NWR.com, you know, I do a lot of, uh, I've been doing stuff with them. Nicholas Winding Refn's uh, and uh, Jimmy McDonough from mm -hmm. Pleasoid Express, a gigantic, insane website that's a little bit difficult to maneuver on purpose on their part, but there's uh, impossible to see unknown films that you could watch in beautiful, uh, restored. Uh, <laughs> that are not available on DVD. Uh -huh. One of which is a really wonderful movie called Walk the Walk that I've had in under my bed for 30 years, waiting for the right time to open it. The only print in the world. So stuff like that. You should check that, that website out. It's very interesting with people going very in depth on, on the weirdest subjects. Wow, what's the website uh, called again? By D B dot B Y N W R and B Y N W R N W R. Okay, all right, sounds great. I, I'm not sure if it's dot net or dot com, but it's one or the other. All right, well, let's have you back sometime soon, and we can talk about it more. Let's do that. All right, all right. Say good night, Louie. And happy birthday, Howie. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> 17 minutes.